Hey everyone, welcome back to Lecture 9G of Useful Genetics, where we're going to extend our previous discussion of inbreeding to a concrete example, the human population called the Samaritans of Israel. These peoples underwent serious problems resulting from inbreeding, and then were able to resolve these problems using a series of genetic interventions. So I came to know about the Samaritans through an excellent article in the LA Times by Edmund Sanders. They are and were a tribe closely allied to the Jews living in Israel. Um, they're mentioned in the Bible. Every one with any sort of Christian upbringing has heard of the Good Samaritan. Initially, back in Roman times, they were a very large population, over a million members. And Although they were a very traditional community and discouraged any marriage with outsiders, because the population was so large, inbreeding wasn't a problem. But their numbers declined dramatically, so that by the early, early 20th century, there were only about 150 members of the tribe left. And since then, the tribe has partially recovered current numbers are about 750, but this recovery depended on families having many children and a great deal of inbreeding because there were so few people to choose from. In fact, there was 46% of the marriages were between cousins. So this strong inbreeding had serious consequences for their health. Um, there was a very high frequency of genetic defects in babies who were being born in this population. Um, rare blood diseases, um, deafness, mutinous, blindness, all kinds of physical handicaps were present at um, about a tenfold higher frequency than in outbred populations. And the rate of spontaneous miscarriage was also quite high. And so rather than simply give up, the population decided to adopt genetic interventions that would reduce the harmful consequences of inbreeding as much as possible while not destroying their traditional way of life. And so they took on genetic screening, prenatal diagnosis, and selective abortion for fetuses that were carrying um, birth defects. And the extreme step of allowing marriages with outsiders. So this sounds, on one side, this sounds great. This is genetics to the rescue. These people have solved all their problems. But in fact, there's another perspective on this, which would be to say, wait, this is really a form of eugenics. And eugenics is now generally considered to be very bad because it has been applied in very bad ways in racial mistreatment. But here's a figure from the Second International Congress of Genetics, Eugenics back in 1921. When the principles of genetics were first rediscovered when Mendel's work came back to light and genetics began to flower, there was a strong movement in favor of using genetics to better the human population. You can see genetic eugenics is the self-direction of human evolution. Like a tree, eugenics draws its materials from many sources and organizes them into a harmonic entity, harmonious entity. But so what are the concerns given that you know this this old poster makes eugenics sound like a wonderful thing? Well, one concern is that I mean, in, in the issues where you, we've been most concerned about eugenics, it's been applied by one race against another. And so a whole population would be coerced to suffer genetic harm in the betterment of the whole of humanity. And that was definitely unethical. In this case, the population as a whole, or the elders, the decision makers in the Samaritans, are strongly in favor of these interventions, but there's still grounds for concern that individuals are being coerced, um, that marriages are being forced or arranged. Although tradition, I mean, in some ways, the tradition of the population has always been arranged marriages. 
Um, another is enforced abortion, that pregnancies that might be very wanted will have to be um, terminated if they are carrying um, genetic diseases. And there's the concern about the loss of both genetic identity and cultural identity because of having to abandon the prohibition against outside marriages. So we don't have answers to these questions, and the good thing is that the answers to these questions are being left to the Samaritans to decide, which is as it should be. But they are very difficult questions. So we've considered an example of a genetic intervention to deal with a serious health problem created by inbreeding. The Samaritans became highly inbred and suffered very severe genetic consequences. And then they've been able, in the last 10 or 20 years, to begin correcting these problems by carrying out a series of genetic interventions on the way that they reproduce. But this raises serious ethical issues. Coming up next, we're going to look on the good side of inbreeding, looking at how it can produce plants and animals that have reproducible genotypes and phenotypes. I hope to see you there.